What is up you guys? Welcome to another video. My name is Armand if you're new to this channel. I'm a Toronto-based deep and progressive house DJ and producer and this YouTube channel is full of video lessons aimed at you beginner and intermediate level DJs to help you improve your skills up to the next level. If you browse around the channel you'll find a number of lessons on the technical aspects of DJing and you'll also find videos dealing with the business side of DJing in terms of how to promote yourself and also how to get gigs booked. Now lately I've been getting more and more into music production, trying to work on my first album, and I know that some of you are also interested in music production. So I thought what I would do here is share with you what's required to set up your first uh, digital music production studio, and also let you know what some of the costs are that you can expect uh, to incur in getting this set up. And my goal in doing this is to show you that it might be a little bit more affordable than you think. I think you can actually get it done for around $1,000, as we'll see. Now, that assumes that you already have a laptop or computer that you can use, but otherwise, in terms of getting the other equipment that's necessary, it, I believe it can be done for around $1,000. So we're gonna talk through uh, four different things that are required. One is the software. You need some kind of production software on your computer. Uh, second thing is the audio interface to make a connection between your instruments and your keyboard uh, and the audio software that you're using. And the third thing is studio monitors, uh, the speakers that you use to hear and craft your sound. And lastly, a MIDI controller or some kind of uh, device to input the notes into the software. So I have an example here of a MIDI controller and also of an actual synthesizer. And we'll take a closer look at those things now. So let's talk about the hardware first. Uh, firstly, an audio interface, what does it do exactly? Well, if you have a MIDI controller, which is basically a keyboard or a device that can input signals into your uh, audio production software, you need to have some kind of, basically a junction box between the uh, hardware device that you're inputting music on and the actual software. So it's basically a communication box and it allows you to plug in in the front. You can see this particular model has two microphone inputs and it has its MIDI uh, ports on the rear. So in the front, I can plug into up to two microphones or I could do a microphone plus a guitar. And for my purposes, I found that two channels has been enough, although there are other audio interfaces that have up to you know, four or eight inputs on them. This particular interface is from a company called Presonus. It's called the AudioBox USB 2.0 and it runs about $150, so it's quite affordable. Now you could start making music in a software without an audio interface. The only problem with that is you wouldn't be able to plug in a MIDI device such as a keyboard like this to help control the notes. So you'd just be having to click in and pencil in every single note um, with your mouse. So it can be done, but it's a little uh, more tedious and this isn't a huge cost and it also allows you to plug in real instruments like a guitar, a bass, or to sing, to do vocals uh, with a microphone. So for $150, I think it's well worth it to have an audio interface, and that's gonna expand your uh, creative abilities and your workflow uh, process, because you can do a lot more with it. So that brings us to the MIDI controller. Um, these are quite inexpensive. I think I bought this one used for about $50. Uh, this one at the moment isn't plugged in, but it has 25 keys. Uh, you can shift the octaves up and down when you need to access other keys that are higher or lower. And it has a number of um, knobs that you can map to different parameters within your software to control things like uh, you know, filter effects, reverbs, echoes, things like that. So if, if you want to record um, you know, the application of those effects in your music in real time, you can do that. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between a MIDI controller and an actual synthesizer. So this here is a MIDI controller and it cannot produce any sounds on its own. It needs to be connected to the computer and then it controls the sounds that are built into the software. Whereas an actual synthesizer, like this back here, it's capable of producing that sound and sending it to speakers on its own without the need for a computer because it is actually an instrument and it's generating its own sounds internally. Now this one here is the Korg Mini Log. Uh, I paid about $450 used for this one. Granted, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot more versatile. It comes with 100 different preset sounds. And then of course, because it's an actual synthesizer, you can create and shape your own sounds from scratch, just from a sine wave, which is the basic sort of electronic signal that a synthesizer produces in its native format. And then you can also record uh, your sounds into your software when you're trying to write a song. 
All right, so last but not least on the hardware side of things, that brings us to your studio monitors. Now, you might ask, why can't I just use my regular computer speakers? Uh, well, you could, and you can see that I have a pair of those as well, but the reasoning is that regular speakers are tuned to sound a little bit warmer, to have a bit more bass, so on and so forth, to sound, in other words, pleasing uh, to the layperson who's listening to music. Whereas studio monitors are not tuned in that way. They're basically made to sound as flat and neutral as possible so you can really hear what's going on with your sounds. So this becomes important at the end of the uh, songwriting process when you're doing what's called your mix down and then your mastering, when you're adjusting all of the sounds just so, so that they spread out nicely across the stereo frequency. They don't sound like they're fighting one another. You're not getting muddiness. You're trying to get a nice, clear, crisp, and punchy sound. So monitors are something you don't want to skimp on too much. And I think uh, you can buy some starting around $200, $250. But I think you really want to be spending more around $400 on your monitors. That's probably about the range where you can start to get some decent ones. Now you'll notice that my monitors here are also on stands. You don't actually have to buy purpose-made stands, but the point of these is to isolate the monitors off of your desk so you don't get any uh, vibrations or buzzing sound off of the desk or the surface that they're on. And you can just pick up some uh, cheap foam or some rubber mats or something like that to put your monitors on as well. You don't have to buy purpose-made stands. So let's recap on the hardware costs so far. You spend $150 for an audio interface, about $100 for a small MIDI controller, that brings you to $250. And if you spend $400 on your studio monitors, you spend $650. And if you're working from a budget of $1,000, you've got $350 left to spend on your software. So let's see what that can get you. A lot of producers really like Logic Pro X, which is made by Apple. I personally use Ableton Live, but as you can see here, Logic Pro X sells for just $279, so that would be well within budget. And as I say, I like Ableton Live, and you can see here that the uh, introductory suite is only $119. Their standard or full version is a bit more pricey for $539 Canadian. So that would break the bank a little bit, putting you over budget of $1,000. But you can always start with the intro package, see how it works for you. And if you're getting more and more serious about production, you could upgrade to the standard. There's a third product called uh, Reason by a company called Propeller Heads. I used to use Reason and I found it pretty uh, user friendly. I like the program a lot, but ultimately I found that more people were using Ableton and if you want to do any collaborations, uh, working with uh, friends on tracks and bouncing ideas around and sharing files, it's probably best to be on Ableton because Ableton, at least for electronic music, seems to kind of be the standard and the most popular that everyone's using. But as you can see here, uh, Reason offers an introductory essentials package as well for just 125 and their full uh, experience or their full package is $510, so a lot closer to the cost of Ableton. My recommendation would be for Ableton. All right guys, so there you have it. How to get started with your first digital studio for around $1,000. I hope that's been helpful for you. And if you have any questions about any of the equipment or how to get things set up, just post in the comments below. I'll do my very best to get back to you. All right, thanks for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you back here for the next video. Cheers.